The first single I released as a singer was this year on May 20th. I had 981 Facebook page likes, 20 monthly listeners on Spotify, and no actual fan base. Today, five months later, I have 2010 page likes on Facebook, 2,400 monthly listeners on Spotify, and these are just some of the comments and messages that I receive on a daily basis. I did this without any blog PR, without any Spotify playlist campaigns, without any radio promotion, without any live shows. In today's video, I'm gonna walk you through everything I did to jumpstart this fan base in the last five months. So the videos, the songs, the marketing strategies, the costs, the results. So if you'd like to copy me and jumpstart your fan base over the next few months, just like I did, Let's get into it. I kicked off my music career reboot with a video ad campaign on Facebook for my song, Sacrifice. The ad was for a live performance video of the song, so no fancy camera moves, no crazy settings or lighting, no cool graphics, except for the lyrics of the song, which I, I had to caption. And the song itself was written and somewhat produced, but it definitely wasn't finished yet. So if people wanted to listen to it, aside from that video, they couldn't. There was nowhere for them to listen to it. Now at that time, I had a music video edited and ready to put out along with a finished single. And that music video for my song County Graves had all this behind the scenes content. So you might ask, why would you spend a marketing budget on a song people couldn't even listen to? I had a finished, great looking cinematic music video shot and edited. I had a fully mixed song. Why did I lead with this less polished live performance for a song that wasn't even done yet? For those watching this who have already taken our fan finder training, you already know the answer to these questions. But if you haven't taken it yet, I highly recommend that you do. And I'll, I'll put a link in the description of this video for you to check it out. The reason that I went with the lower budget unfinished song live performance video is that marketing is a process not an event. Now I'm an artist without any content that's out that I would want my fan base to see. None of my existing content has anything to do with who I am as an artist now. So even if I were to lead with the finished single, even if I were to put it out on Spotify, I really don't have enough content and digital presence to convince a bunch of people to sign up for my email list, stream me on Spotify, much less buy merchandise or tickets from me for a live show. So. Knowing that I can't achieve those goals just yet, I had to look at what goals I could achieve and what the best way to achieve those goals was. And the truth is that 99 times out of 100, slick looking music videos perform terribly on social media. The coolest, most cinematic music video will often not do as well as a video that looks like the one that I led with. And that's because when we're on social media, our brains are on autopilot. We don't necessarily know that we're doing it, but we're filtering out thousands of messages that are all trying to grab our attention and we do it automatically. Our brains are like this powerful filter that just blocks out anything we don't need to pay attention to. And when we see something in our social feed that is both from someone we don't know and highly produced and really good looking, dead giveaway. It's an ad, you don't even think about it, you don't even look at it. And that's because the types of content our friends share that our network cares about has two common properties. It's either A, shared by a friend or a familiar page, or B, it's candid. So think about the types of things that go viral in your social network and ask yourself, is it filmed with a big cinema camera or is it filmed with a cell phone? Does it involve a script or is it ad hoc? Is it candid? Is it in the moment? Does it feature multiple cuts and transitions or is it one long continuous shot? Most viral videos are shaky cell phone recordings or moving images with a voiceover or a single gliding camera capturing an unbroken moment. Most viral videos do not look like music videos and most music videos do not go viral. Key example, this is Ted Yoder. He did a cover of Tears for Fears on his hammer dulcimer in his backyard. Someone in his family recorded it on a cell phone and it got over 400 million views. This is Walmart Yodel Kid. Cell phone, I don't have to tell you what happened with him. He's got a full on music career now because of this video. Okay, so the first reason I ran that video before the music video is because I knew it would perform better. But perform better for what? What was my goal? Well, my goal wasn't to get Spotify streams. It wasn't to get sales. It wasn't to get email subscribers. It was to get data. Before I can get anyone to do any of those things, I need to be able to talk to a group of people who I'm confident dig my music. So when I ran this video ad on Facebook, the audience 
audiences for the ad were all based on other musicians. But as I went over in a recent video, which I'll put right up here, you can also make the audience for your ad a group of people who have already done something with you. So when these people who had never heard of me before watched my video, the ones who watched it almost all of the way through, they became eligible for a custom audience in Facebook, an audience based entirely off of people who watched that specific video 75% of the way through. That's all I wanted to do. I just wanted to build up a big enough custom audience to be able to run ads to people who actually liked my artwork. That's goal number one. Goal number two was to get at least a thousand people in that custom audience and build a lookalike audience. The custom audience, 75% viewers of this video, they've already heard of me. They know now who I am, but they also share commonalities between each other that make them the right type of people for my music. I can't see what those commonalities are. I can't look at that data. That would be a, a major privacy violation. I don't know what it is about these thousand people that makes them like my music so much, but Facebook does. A lookalike audience is an audience made up of people who are most similar to a custom audience. So when I build a lookalike audience based on my custom audience of 75% viewers of this video, I'm getting an audience of people who haven't heard of me yet, but who are very similar to the people who did actually like my song. I know they are very likely to enjoy my music. So first I spent $39 testing five different headlines for my ad. And the headline that performed best was this one. I wanted to write a song about how chewing ice has ruined my teeth, but then, and then dot, dot, dot. So you wanna figure out what what do you mean? You want to write a song about how chewing ice has ruined your teeth, but then what? What happened? Now, curiosity baiting is kind of on a downtrend. It's something that we won't be able to do as much anymore, but in this sense, it was pretty natural because I actually did start writing this song about how chewing ice has ruined my teeth. Next, once I knew which headline was going to work best, I tested 15 different audiences based on different artists. I actually built these audiences using our targeting list worksheet, which we give away for free as a resource to help you do your audience research for your ads and find audiences that are most likely to enjoy your music. I'll put a link in the description for you guys to download it for free if you'd like to use it. So I spent about $200 testing audiences and dialing into the best performing ones, which were The White Stripes, Rage Against the Machine, Danzig, and Joe Cocker. Pretty diverse spread of artists. By that time, I had gotten about 41,000 views to my video through the ads. I think coupled with organic views, it was about 60,000 views total, which isn't mind blowing. It's not anything to write home about, but but again, I wasn't looking for a million view video. I was looking for the right people and the data about those people. Specifically, I was looking for the 1,722, 75% video views that I got so that I could build that lookalike audience of people who were most similar to the real fans, the people who watched my video all the way through, the people who liked it so much. When I built the lookalike, my best performing audience was the White Stripes. It cost me about 10 cents to get a 75% viewer from that audience. That's what I was buying them at. Out the gate, my lookalike dropped that down to seven cents. So I was purchasing basically a listener, a real listener, somebody who wants to see more music from me for about seven cents a pop, which if you think about it, that pretty much blows any other method of promotion out of the water, right? Like I've spent $3,000 on huge blog PR campaigns that got maybe a hundred real fans. That's $30 a fan. The craziest part is that with any other method, following up with the fans you create is almost impossible. But with this, I can serve an ad for like $10 and reach every single one of the listeners that I created during this initial test run. So I ran that video campaign in May and just kept it running at about $100 a month, running on autopilot, creating new fans for me. Costs are still right there at about seven cents per 75% video viewer. So they haven't gone up. And to date, we've created about 11,400 475% video viewers for that specific video. And I was also able to gain over a thousand page likes on my Facebook page by using this Chrome extension, invite all post likers to like page. I just go to my ad, I click on the likes to open up this window, and then I click on the extension and it automatically invites everybody to like my page. Pretty cool. Now, just to be clear, that means I have an audience of 11,400 people who I know have all watched my nearly four minute video 75% of the way through. That's three full minutes of watch time for 11,000 people. 
Next, I rolled out the music video that I had that we talked about earlier and I ran the same process on it. The lowest I was ever able to get my 75% views for that video was about 14 cents and that's even with lookalikes, which is what I expected. It wasn't as well suited for the goal of creating my initial data set, my initial fan base, as the other video, the first one I ran. But what it did do is allow me to release behind the scenes content about that video shoot, about the song, and point my existing fans to not only that content, but my Spotify page as well. I was able to reach every single one of those viewers with follow-up ads, and I was able to drive about 4,000 streams to my first single on Spotify. To be clear, I had 20 monthly listeners when I started. But during that campaign, I reached about 1,400 monthly listeners. This got my streaming data rolling, which is important for a whole lot of reasons I can't go over in this video, but if you click up here, we have some awesome podcasts about streaming data and, and why that's important. And if you wanna learn a lot more about Spotify marketing, you can also check out our Spotify field guide training, which is exclusive to our Indie Pro members, and I'll put a link in the description or above for Indie Pro if you'd like to check it out. I introduced myself to 11,000 people who all dig my music. I gave them bonus content, music videos, a chance to check out the second song on streaming, but the whole time, they've all been waiting for that first song that I showed them. Here's just some of the comments and messages I got while I was making everybody wait. Now, I don't want you to think this was intentional or some kind of marketing you know, strategy. It literally took all that time from May until last week to get the song finished. And if I had it sooner, I probably would have released it sooner, but I digress, it still worked out. It was now time to drop that track on Spotify and push everybody to it. First, I wrote down all of the artist-based audiences that perform best for me me in my Facebook campaign. So those were Rage Against the Machine, White Stripes, and Black Keys. Then I went to developers.spotify.com, which is Spotify's developer console. And this basically lets you see all types of data in Spotify that you normally can't see. I entered the Spotify URI in for all these artists one by one, so I could see what genres Spotify had associated with those artist profiles. Then I uploaded the single 14 days before the release to DistroKid, giving it seven days to get on Spotify and an additional seven days to submit the song. So once DistroKid had put the song on Spotify ready for release, I went to my Spotify for Artists dashboard, went to music, upcoming, and then click submit song. Then I filled out the application using the common genres from my research for my best performing artists and I submitted it. What this does is it allows Spotify time to analyze your song's audio data, then add that audio data to its recommendation engine and finally recommend your song to the fan of songs that have similar audio data and genre tags. And that all happens through the Release Radar playlist. Now, on the day my song released, I replied to comments and messages for a solid four hours, pointing everybody that I had already gotten to the song on Spotify. I also took my existing video campaign and created a version of the post that has a button linking to the song on Spotify. The button actually links to my own page where I pixel everyone and add them to yet another custom audience, but that's a little bit advanced for the purposes of this video. Through all of this activity, I was able to get over 1,000 streams and nearly 1,000 listeners to my song in the first few days. Now I released on a Monday, which means I had four days before my song hit release radar on Friday and hit release radar it did. Despite only ever having a maximum of like 1,400 monthly listeners, my release radar distribution amounted to 1,700 listeners and climbing. From those listeners, I've had about 2,500 streams, meaning that about 75% of my listeners streamed the song twice. Because my genre tags and my audio data were exactly suited for the artists whose fans really respond to my music, Spotify was able to recommend my music to the exact right type of listener. But that's not the only cool thing. Before the song even hit release radar, I was able to drive tons of streaming data to Spotify from the exact right type of listener. And this reinforces the recommendation recommendations that Spotify makes and gives them even more of a chance to recommend me to people who will actually love my music. Five months ago, I did not have a fan base. I did not have content. Nobody was asking for my music. Nobody was messaging me. Today, I'll receive dozens of comments and messages from real fans around the world who love what I'm putting out and I'm just getting started. My budget for this five month phase was $300 per month and in total I spent about $1,900. But about $600 of that money I spent testing new strategies that haven't yet been proven, just new ideas I'm working through. So the same result, everything I just described, 
could have been achieved for me for about $1,300 or about $260 per month, which for a monthly marketing budget is nothing. It's nothing. Furthermore, my video ad was nothing to write home about in terms of performance. I've seen video ads get down to one one hundredth of a cent. So being able to purchase 75% viewers at seven cents isn't the best that it could possibly be. I've seen campaigns that perform down at five cents per 75% viewer, which would have dropped my cost significantly. My next challenge is to prepare a solid bundle of singles to culminate into a full debut release. And during that time, create a system of ads and web pages and video content that can help me build my email list. Now I promise to share with you every step of the journey. So if you liked this video, if it was helpful and you wanna follow along through all my mistakes and my lessons and my cheering successes, just like this video and subscribe to the channel and you will not miss a thing. Oh, and if you do click subscribe, the red button, right, right down here or here, I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.